it's Pokemon! YOLO swag. We're doing it again. We're dooming it again. We're the Doomer generation. <laughs> yep. Explain the Doomers to me. The Doomers? Yeah. It's a, you know, it's an answer to the Boomers. Yeah. It's everything the Boomers don't stand for. The Doomers. But do it, do it at the same time. The Boomers. The Doomers. Yeah. They're the opposite of the Boomers. Yes. Uh, we're playing Pokemon still to this day. Some, it's been 50 years. <laughs> some There were some responses to our episode 2 asking for, like, what is the appeal of this game? And it seems like the appeal of this game is basically exactly what the marketing of this game is, which is that it is edgy adult Pokemon. Hi. Uh, or teenage, I guess. I, mean, I wouldn't call it adult, but... Yeah, people were like, it's just really cool to see Pokemon in, like, a darker, seedy setting where there's, like... Organized you know. crime. Oh, I wait, mean, that's in every Pokemon yeah, game. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> everyone was like... I, I saw a couple of comments that were like, oh, it was really cool to see, like, the seedy underbelly. And I'm like, wasn't that already, like, a major part of the game is that you fight Team Rocket in a... First game has you go underneath a fucking pachinko parlor to fight a crime organization. Second game has a guy selling you slowpoke tails, which is, like, an illegal fucking food. That's uh, poaching, food. man. Yeah, like, I always found that shit, like, pretty dark. I remember the first time Cubone, I saw, like... that's pretty dark. Yeah. I wouldn't call it a seedy underbelly, but it is definitely dark. Um, I mean, the yeah, the, the whole fucking spook tower. That's what it's called, right? Lavender Town. And then they had the Pokemon Tower. Yeah, spook tower. Yeah, same. Oh, did I fight that bitch? Um, I mean, honestly, I... So someone had also said that, like, uh, there was one comment, and I, I want to address it because I agree, but uh, it's only because I phrased my, my complaint wrong in the first place. This guy said, Fuck you, Digi. Towns are the best part of RPGs. Dungeons suck and are boring. I agree. Um, what I meant was not so much that the problem was that the game is all... Like... It's that the game is all towns and you fight in the towns, and I found that strange. Because, like, in a Pokemon game, you know, it's basically you go through a town and then you run through a, a route, and the Pokemon trainer battles are the best part of going through the routes. Random Pokemon encounters kind of suck ass unless you're trying to actually catch all the Pokemon, and even then, once you've caught the ones in the area, you're fucking sick of it. You're like, I don't want to fight, I don't want to have to fucking constantly have all these battles. But, like... What this game now is, is what I would have wanted, which is, like, there are no random encounters, but there is, like, areas you can run through that have guys. Because if it was literally just towns, it just makes the game feel incredibly small, and, uh, and, like, the towns aren't, like, you know, big, wide-open cities. It's, like, RPG towns, like, a little one-screen town where you, you know, there's ten huts. Two houses. Right. And a lab. Like, it would be one thing if it was, like... Persona or like, um, fucking, uh, what's the, like, Final Fantasy 12's big central city where it's like, yeah, you, you can really get lost in this place. And like, I wouldn't mind if a lot of the game took place here. Or final, better example, Lightning Returns, which all takes place practically in a, in a fucking Your big waifu ass city. Lightning? White Lightning is not my waifu by any stretch, but, uh, I do like that game. Um, so... So it's been a couple days. What have you been up to, uh, May? I've been playing games and watching you play games. It's been a game's life. Slowly watching my youth fade away. Would you say every that, passing? Would you hour. say that you are games? Definitely gay. So do that's you, pretty Do close. you feel your youth passing away, or is it more that you're watching my youth pass you away? You know, every it, watching it kind of like, you know, it initiates it in me. Yeah. Yeah. Does 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 it make does seeing me be old make you feel old by oh, association? Oh, yeah. Does it hurt? It's kind of like is well, my life is over. Yeah. Like all my all my friends from college or have their boyfriends who are like twenty two, and it's no, like they don't. I'm teasing. No, they don't. And it's like they have their friend from college got with like a forty five year old man. I know. And then fucking, I know. Like, abandoned all reality. <laughs> I did the same though. You're just not 45 and don't have three ex-wives and seven children. Oh my god, he has seven children? 
something like that. He's a bunch of kids. That's fucking crazy. And they're older. Some of them are older than her, which is the um, weirdest part. I mean, my when my grandma was in like her sixties, she was like with a guy who was in in like his her forty his forties. My mom, like, hey, man. it was like a guy who was the same age as my mom. And I'm my not. Mom was I'm not hating. Not okay she has a rich man who flies all over the all over the world. He flies to Australia and Japan and China all the time. So yeah, he's never around. Right. What does she do then? Just be bored? Drink wine. Yeah. Be a housewife. Clean. Stare into the refrigerator. <laughs> stare at it. <laughs> um. Well, how has been the the game's life? I've been playing Final Fantasy three, mainly just out of an autistic desire to complete all of the games. I think everyone who cares about Final Fantasy has this autistic desire to. Anybody beat all who of them. plays Final Fantasy is autistic. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that you know I'm what kid, I think I it kid. is. It's I not think, true. I think only it is. Like, I think it is true. Only like. 55%? So, I've started playing Lost Odyssey, which is developed by Hironobu Sakaguchi, um, the same guy who created Final Fantasy. And the way that he thinks about the world resonates me uh, resonates with me very strongly in the same way that Hideaki Anno resonates with me very strongly, of, like, these are guys who have this, like, this... They, they seem to have, like, a pretty clear idea of the way things are. They're very smart people who really want to communicate their their vision of what the world is in the future. Um, and the only way they know how to do it is with extremely heavy-handed allegory that, that doesn't... that is unpretentious. Like, I would say that Ava is uniquely unpretentious in that it has all these like big philosophical ideas that it wants to explore but it's like also you know it's like hey this is also a fan service anime like this is anime yeah. i'm not going to try to pretend this isn't anime and sakaguchi has a similar approach to video games where it's like final fantasy can tackle some deep issues but it also is like extremely gamey there's tons of just goofy mini games and wacky cutscenes and funny weird shit that makes no sense. And like even Lost Odyssey, which like purports itself to be like an adult themed game. It's like mm -hmm. the characters are older, there's like immediate political intrigue and all that shit, but like the characters are presented as massively fucking autistic. And like the way the game interacts with you is like goofy facial expressions and cartoony falling over themselves and stuff. And it's just like, this is just Sakaguchi's sensibility. This is just how he looks at the world. And like, I think the problem with the Final Fantasies after 10 and after like he left is that they, they've gotten farther away from the self-awareness like, Final Fantasy oh. 13 is, like, that without the self-awareness. I feel like Final Fantasy 15 has even less self-awareness. Oh, it has none. It's, like, that game is, like, borderline Chunibyo. Because that's what yeah. what, what Chunibyo is, and I, I, I want to make some kind of video. I'll probably dive into this at some point if I ever continue the Otaku Hero's journey. Because a big part of what I wanted to talk about is what Chunibyo is. Which is, when you... Because... To be an otaku, to be like an otaku hero, is to embrace the autism. But to be Chunibyo is to embrace the autism without self-awareness. And that's why they make fun of them. Because, like, as an otaku, it's like... Your, your mission is to be the freak you want to see, but to do so while acknowledging that you are a weirdo. Yeah, that you're you, humble that, about it. Right, exactly. That you're not... You're not special in a good way you're special and that makes you different and that means you have your own skill set but it doesn't make you better and chunibyo is when you think that the things that make you different make you better and make you like a super powered you know person and like i definitely think there's like i think the reason that people address like that people look down on that attitude is that it is kind of the path to being a super villain to being a sociopath is like the to to think that that because you're different you are like all knowing yeah. and all powerful. Once you start 
thinking know. other people are NPCs, then... Right. <laughs> then it leads to problems. But, like, some people are NPCs, though. And that's fine. You know? Some people just they aren't just need as to be awoken. developed. Yeah. They don't have good character development. It's all good. You we know? don't need more developed people. That no. Just... They don't all have to be deep characters. No. Or even engaging characters. The, I just posted the video of what is deep right before, uh, right before what we started What is this. deep? What is the deepest thing that you've done today? The deepest thing I've done today? Probably edit what is deep. Fair enough. There's a lot of depth Fair enough. in the way that I edit. It's funny. Um, that video is kind of like the perfect embodiment of my editing mentality. Which is like... <laughs> like editing impressionistically almost like what I went out of my way to do it, it's very simple it's like you know it probably took me 45 minutes to edit the video because it's like a lot of clips that just kind of drag on that I was able to get away with because of the fact that I'm not showing anime you footage misled me. but like all of it I went out of my way to find images that were complex so that even though it's on screen for a while, it takes you. You really have to like look around and drink in the entire image, you know. Yeah. And uh, and like there's just lots of moving parts and components and stuff, and it's like, because that's you know basically the message of the video is that deep just means complex, and there's no other working definition of it that really makes any sense, um, and that like because there's a complexity in even making something good at all then like anything good is complex and is deep so you might as well just say engaging because it's more clear what you're talking about when you're trying to say that something's good yeah um not that this is going to change anything about the way people use the word deep it's just a fun video mostly made to advertise my i am games channel but uh yeah so that's what we've been doing is games because we made the Spider-Man video, me and me and Tom. By we made, I mean Tom played a video game and I made a video yeah. about the two videos about the video game, uh, based on his experience with the game. And it was fun and people liked it. And there's nothing going on in anime. And watching him play a video game made me want to play a video game. And then I spent like three days laboring over figuring out what game to play. Which led to me making this gigantic list. I talked about it in the the latest PCP, but that will probably come out after this this now, video. Okay. Yeah. Quick quick question. Should what? I save before I go into the boss battle with Mayor B? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Because I have to go all the way back to save. How long would it take to go back? A minute. Uh how long would it take to redo everything you just did if you lost? Probably not that long because the two battles I fought weren't mandatory. But I'm just mm. gonna save because I want to catch them it's all. It's pretty. It's pretty gay that they didn't put a fucking save point. No, right I like boss. that about this game. Yeah, you yeah. like having to run back and save. It makes it really like punishing if you don't capture the Pokemon and you're like, oh, fucking Kike, and you have to, you know. Go back. That wasn't even. Minutes. That was like. That was like, twelve seconds of running back. I know. It was not I even know. a big deal at all. It wasn't that big of a deal, but uh, I kind of like that about. I like. I like kind of. You know, I like when games don't have auto save, especially simple games like this, where all you do is fight. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't want auto save, but a, a, a save point right before the boss would be nice, just because. Like, it's, like, if there were random battles, I could understand the point of leaving it without, and because then the it would Gallo be a challenge Darkness, to go back it, Just, like, in the menu, you can open up and save, like, a regular Pokemon game. But I kind of like that you have to, you have to go to the PC to save. I don't know. It seemed like having to walk all the way back had no strategic point. It was just a waste of fucking time. I like my time to be wasted, goddammit. That's why I play <laughs> JRPGs. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, well, should we get into some topics? I have some topics. Do you have any topics you want to talk about? Yeah. Alright. 
Do you want to do yours first, or you want sure. me to go first? All right, you go. You okay. Go ahead. Which is better, Kraft or Velveeta? Velveeta. Why? Because Velveeta cheese is something special. And, um, it's liquid gold, as it says on the, on the, on the box. So, we usually have Velveeta, like, at least once a week in our household. Yeah. We eat it as a side with, you know, dinner often. Usually chicken cordon bleu. I like Velveeta, and I like it with, like, tuna in it, or some kind of meat. It's, like, fucking, it's good as hell. But, I kind of like Kraft more. Yeah? Because... This is a. Sh I did not expect you to take this position, cause you you were shaming me about getting craft this week. You were quietly shaming. It's me. just you were giving me funny check. looks when I was because asking for I it. don't really like mac and cheese that much. I like. I mean, I like mac and cheese, but like I like homemade mac and cheese better, and I can right. make homemade mac and cheese. Well, why haven't we done that? Like, because why did this never come up? It's fucking a pain in the ass to make homemade mac well, and cheese. Well, then. And you've never express. I mean, like you've never expressed an interest in a homemade I, mac. And I've cheese. never had homemade because mac and cheese. Homemade I mac have not and conceived cheese. of the concept of homemade mac and cheese <laughs> until you said something about it earlier today, and I was like, "What? Homemade mac? What are you rolling your own noodles?" <laughs> no! I literally said that, and you were like, "No, you just fucking it's buy easy. elbows and make the cheese." And I was like, "Oh, well, that makes sense." Um, you know, I have no idea what can be cooked. Like, okay, um, as far as I know, most things are made with magic. Everything can be made from scratch. Right. Uh, I mean, I know with noodles, you gotta, like, make a yeast thing and then fucking... So, I'm not talking about making my own noodles. I'm right. talking about getting a box of Barilla Elbows, getting some, you know, some cheese that you gotta shred up, getting some milk, making the cheese sauce yourself, boiling the noodles, and then put the cheese sauce on top. Or you can bake it. Like, there's some mac and cheese that you can, yeah. like, bake. That doesn't even sound that hard. It's not. Though it does sound, like, not the most cost-effective. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Kraft mac and cheese is, like, it's fine. Yeah. And it's easy and cheap. Right. Um. So, so I, uh, I have a, and granted, the one we got was the thick and creamy. Which is uh, closer to Velveeta anyways. It's like a kind of an imitation Oh, maybe Velveeta that's why flavor. I like that one more. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't really remember liking Kraft Mac and Cheese that much. So, okay. I've never been a big I, Mac. I've always been a huge oh, that macaroni person. My like, I am big, ah, no. big deep, <laughs> big deep into macaroni and cheese. And, uh... As like a kid, cause cause as a kid I was a super picky eater, and that was one of the only things that I would actually fucking eat. Um, and like we had lots of craft, and we usually get the character ones, you know, the ones oh, that yeah. are like, in the shape of a character. Which always, for whatever reason, make it taste worse. They do. The they noodles taste, are like powdery. And they like... taste kind of cardboardy. Yeah. And uh, and also the cheese usually comes out kind of watery. So the character mac, I'm not as into. But I can slam it down very easily. So to me, that's more of like a... If you, if I was in a position where I had to eat just a box of macaroni, I would prefer that over Velveeta because I can just slam one down and be, like, full, you know? Uh, like, it's not about taste. It's about eating a whole fucking thing of macaroni, which I had to do one time. But, um... Hey, man. For, desperate like, three days in a row. Desperate signs come from desperate measures. But, um... So, but then you got, like, this this one, the Thick and Creamy, which is pretty good, and Velveeta, Velveeta I like the most, but there's two things about Velveeta. One, it is terrible cold, and two, oh, yeah. it is easy to undercook, and last time we had it, I think it just got, like, cold, because, like, we were cooking something else at the same time, and, like, we had to wait, like, ten minutes after oh, the, yeah, you're the right. thing got you cooked. You have to, like, time it yeah. perfectly. And it, it, it had gotten, like, just slightly cold, and it wasn't that great, and it made me think, eh, I'm kind of sick of Elvita. I want to try a fucking regular Kraft Mac one time. And so we did. And that, that was the logic. That's what led me to want the Kraft Mac, because I was getting nostalgic for it. It had been a while. We've, we've literally only had Velveeta since, like, practically the whole fucking time we've been dating. So, uh... Or living together, I should say. It's not really dating when you're living together, is it? Did we ever date? Not exactly. I mean, you could say we dated for, like, the two weeks that, uh, 
that we were in a hotel together. Even that was pretty much living together, so... Uh, no. We skipped the dating phase. That was like phase. a booty call. And then we just moved in. We've literally lived with each other from the first time that we met, basically. Because I was just at your dad's house, like, living there for a couple days. Then we lived in a, in a hotel for a few days. I mean, I would say that I was, like, pseudo-homeless. And that's why I was, like, so eager to to jump in with you, you know? I don't know if I would call you pseudo-homeless. You just didn't want to live at home. I didn't have home. a bed. You, you, that's not pseudo-homeless at all. But, no, uh, it's not. You should just say you were sleeping it's on not. the couch. I was that's what sleeping you mean. on the couch. Um, which is shit in itself. By a ball python. You were replaced by a ball python that died, I think. Yeah, it they, they did die. <laughs> Uh, that could have been you, though, so maybe it's good that, that you That could have been me, you're right, I could have died. <laughs> Everything else that gets brought into that house dies, so, you know, maybe it's not... Anyway, um, <laughs> well, so I guess we, we've come to the conclusion that both Macs are good, but, like, neither is perfect. We gotta make House no. Mac next time, because you gotta fucking put your money where your mouth is now. I guess so, I mean, I haven't disappointed Or put your yet. money where my mouth is. Yeah. Um, Have yeah, I disappointed you yet? Be no, the, the food you've been making has been great. Uh, like, it's been getting better and better. Because I, I can remember a time when your cooking was more hit or miss back in the last house. I mean, I didn't really start day. cooking until we started living together. Like, yeah. I would cook occasionally, but, like, never. Yeah, you started taking it a lot more seriously. And, yeah. like, in the early days of us dating, we ate out a lot because, like... Because the cooking was more hit or miss, and I, you know, I, all, the only things I make are, like, deep fried shit. So it was, like, either I'm gonna deep fry some shit, or make, like, uh... Chicken cordon chicken bleu. Chicken cordon bleu, oven. or a, uh, yeah, something, like, just something that's very easy to make. Or you were gonna attempt a recipe, and sometimes it would go amazingly. Like, you can make meat incredibly well. Um, with some of the more advanced stuff, like when we tried to make chili, uh, that didn't didn't. It's because so I well. didn't use a recipe. I just thought that if I put beans and canned tomatoes together with a little bit of seasoning, it would be okay, and it wasn't okay. No. Um, but since moving here, especially, like, we've... Because of the fact that we don't have the money to eat out, like, with the same consistency that we used to... We've been like, hey, let's fucking cook. Let's learn to cook at home. And you've been doing amazing fucking work. You made a fucking stellar uh, cream of broccoli soup in a bread bowl. Which, uh, like, there was, there's, there's room for improvement, but it was still really good. And I really look forward to the next time that you make that. And, like, you know, taking into account what things to alter... Mostly just chopping up the onions more and like maybe maybe we could use like a blender. Maybe a blender should be involved in that. Cause when I think about cream of broccoli from like a restaurant, it's usually just like a pure it's not smooth. Cream of broccoli, it's broccoli cheddar. Oh, well never mind that. Maybe my soup was so terrible you couldn't even tell what kind of soup. I don't it know was. the difference between those two. I mean there isn't really too much of a difference, but broccoli cheddar has a fuck ton of cheese in it, and cream of broccoli is a healthier soup. Mm. Well, either way, it was fucking good. And then there was something you made the other day. I what made was the stuffed last... peppers. Yes, the stuffed peppers are fucking awesome. Um, I'd never had a good stuffed pepper before, and yours was a good stuffed pepper. So I was like, wow, stuffed peppers can be good. I'm fucking excited. That's another one I'd like to try, uh, to try again, so... Yeah, I'm excited about the future of what I'm going to get to eat made by by you, so. Made by May. Yes. Maybe, maybe she was born with it. Maybe it's May. Maybe it's a cancerous tumor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, well, I guess I'll do a it's topic a pseudo now. pseudo wudo. Pseudo wudo! I'm going to talk about Portugal the man. Oh, shit. Ding, ding. The long-awaited. Long-awaited. Long Let's see. Ding, Hopefully ding, this ding, 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 
You may have heard this song if you live on planet Earth. <laughs> so, Victor talked about this a little bit back when this song came out, song and album came out. And uh, I wanted to address it in a little bit more depth because... What is depth? <laughs> in more words. So... <laughs> Because me and Victor have both been Portugal the Man fans for a long time, but I've been an even bigger fan for even longer. Because Portugal the Man has had a very a very interesting career. And they've been around forever. And I've been following them since 2007. So I've been there for most of the steps of the way, though there was like a, a, a period of time where I wasn't really keeping up with them. Um, but nonetheless. So... Back in 07, I got introduced to them when the only albums they had out were Waiter You Vultures and Church Mouth. And Waiter You Vultures is just like a very oddball experimental rock album. The song structures are weird. Most of the songs will like change gears in the middle at some point. And it's not even that they're like... It's not that, like, sonically they're super out there. They're not, like, fucking Mars Volta songs or anything. Like, they, they're, they're kind of indie rock tunes, but just the way that the songs are written is just really different. And it's a super cool and interesting album, though I'd say it's very hit or miss. It was never one of my favorites, though it does have a couple of songs that I really love. The song Elephants is one of my favorite songs. Um, Chicago is a great song. Burn this, burn this, burn this fucker down, down, down. Burn this motherfucker down. Oh, it's it's called it, Chicago. Man, 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 man. Yeah, that song's called Chicago. Word. I didn't know that. Chicago is dancing in xylophone laughter. This. Um, so yeah, it's their first album is pretty dope. It's got some really interesting songs on it. Uh, then they did Church Mouth, which is similar, but it's like a little bit more rock and roll. I didn't like as many of the songs on it, and this is why I didn't keep up with them. Because I had kind of been under the impression, like, okay, I like a few of their songs, but I'm not really that super into their whole discography. And then they also had an EP that came out called It's Complicated Being a Wizard, which is just like a really odd experimental electronic album that's like, tw it's, it's just a 20 minute track, and then that same track split into parts. Um, but, like, it just goes through all these different phases. I would compare it to, like, a Sufjan Stevens song. Like, so, it feels like they listened to Impossible Soul and wanted to do their own, basically. Um, but, like, it's alright. It's a fun time. And I also knew about them because they did a bunch of remixes of the Sound of Animals Fighting songs on... The Sound of Animals Fighting, their first album, The Tiger and the Duke, um sounded like shit so they did a remaster of it and then they added on like all these remixes of songs from their second album and Portugal the Man did like two or three of the remixes on there so I knew them from these places um and I found out about them from like a guy I knew on a forum back in the day who had introduced me to Sound of Animals Fighting and Circle Takes a Square and he sent me the first Portugal the Man album like over fucking like he sent me it as a download over like Yahoo Messenger Nice. at some point nice. um or maybe aim i don't remember i'm surprised there even was a file transferring system across them but he uh, he sent me the whole album so i've been listening to it for years and then they put out the album censored colors and this is like the one that the critics really love because it dives even more into experimental shit and it's like all you know like weird microtones and shit like that i've never really liked it that much because it's like their mellow album and it's just kind of weird. What songs are in that one? Uh, the only one that I think you would have heard is a song that goes like, ba ba da da ba da da ba da da da. Listen to the mo, lay me back down in a hole with a whole lot of people. It's the first track, and it's the only one I like on the album. I generally don't listen to it, so you probably haven't really heard much of it uh, from me. Because I, I, I'm not a fan. I, you've probably heard nothing from Church Mouth either. Like, generally. I wasn't really keeping up with the band because I didn't care about those two albums, but I caught up with them in 2010. I like got back in because they were putting out an album every single year consistently. They always had an album every year, uh, almost on the dot. And so then they launched into this era of doing like folk, folksier songs, stuff that's more like uh, the Folkers Beatles else. 
stuff that's more Beatles esque, stuff that's more earthy, got more like acoustic guitars and shit. And this is when they did the Satanic Satanist. Um, and then they also did a, a sister album of Satanic Satanist called The Majestic Majesty, which is like the unplugged version of the Satanic Satanist. So these two albums come out, and they had a bunch of YouTube videos of them performing the Majestic Majesty songs. It's like this big fucking six person folk group. And I had watched all those, and I got back into the band. And then they also. The next album after that was called American Ghetto. And this one was like. took the songwriting style of the Satanic Satanist, but put more of like a hip hop edge on it. It's okay. There's a few good songs on it. It's not. It's not that worthwhile. Um, yeah, but boy. this is when I caught up with the band. And so, the Satanic Satanist. When I got into that album, I introduced it to all my friends. And this is the only album that every single person I know likes. No one will be mad if you put it on. It's like the most agreeable music in the world for people who like weird music, you know? Because mm-hmm. um, it's not super weird, but it's not... It, like, the songs are pretty pop-sensible. They're they're structured. They're verse-chorus-verse for the most part. They're not, like, just a bunch of fucking strange noises. Um, but they've all got, like, weird noodling sounds coming in and out. And this is, like, the perfect Portugal the Man style and sound. Like, this is what the band is at their best in my mind. Is like, this perfect joining of, like, Beatles-esque simplicity in songwriting with experimentation. Which I guess is what the Beatles also was at their best. Um, so, yeah. they The Satanic Satanist... There was a time where I put together... Um, I, I forced all of my friends to make top 50 album charts... Or like top, what, however many they could they could come up with, and like seven of us had Satanic Satanist on our chart. Most of them <laughs> in the top ten, if not number one. Like that's how popular it was with my group of friends. When we were in the car, we'd always put it on just because it was so agreeable. And then they also put out the album like right around the time I was getting back into them. They put out In the Mountain, In the Cloud, which is also very similar to Satanic Satanist, but it's got a little bit more bigness and richness Look, of sound. That just warm your heart. It's pretty adorable. Uh, so, so like, yeah, it was like it was like a step up from Satanic Satanist in my mind. Most of my friends liked Satanic Satanist more. I don't really know why. I preferred In the Mountain and the Cloud because it sounded bigger. Although it also is rougher. They, the production's kind of rough. Um, so this is their first album where they finally have like singles on the radio. Because the song So American made it onto rock radio. And, like, I heard it in, like, a dealership once. So I was like, okay, this this Portugal the Man is starting to fucking hit it. Like, they're starting to get a taste of success. Now, here's the thing. And here's why I've told this whole story. Because all throughout all of these albums, a consistent theme of their music has been being underpaid. That this band has been trying to hit it big this whole time. And they've always been just broke as hell. They're from Alaska, so even coming to, like, the States to tour is, like, a big expense yeah. for them, you know? They've been a touring, hardworking band with, like, you know, legitimate songwriting skills, legitimate performing skills, who have been making, like, really great would-be pop hit songs, like, songs that should be big and on the radio... But they're just not in the zeitgeist, you know? They haven't crossed over. Even though the sound that they were doing, like, between Satanic Satanist and In the Mountain and the Cloud, was kind of, like, tangentially similar to stuff like uh, Foster the People and shit like that that was huge at the time. So, like, it always felt kind of weird that they hadn't crossed over, because it felt like they should. It felt like it was... This was the moment when the Portugal the Man sound should be blowing up, but... It just an MGMT is also kind of similar, like you know, electric feel is very. You could you could easily throw it in a playlist with Portugal the Man, but it it wasn't quite clicking. So, their next album, they they take, <clears throat> they finally take a year off. It's been album a year for like six years. Level thirteen. What a great addition to your team. <laughs> it's like lower than your starters. I guess you're probably meant to... Oh, he can't even evolve, so, like, why even... Why would you even bother? Just to make you feel bad about not using this man's plusle, even though he generously donated it to to science. Well, I guess you can purify it, at least. It's already it's not purified. Even utterly pointless. I guess if you really want a plusle, you can train it up. Oh, my dream. Who even cares about plusle? Does anybody like plusle and minun? No. 
Everybody just thought of it. Like, that was when we all got sick of Pikachu clones immediately. It was like, Pichu was already the first straw, oh, but like, all these guys. at least he was related to Pikachu. They're all there. Their pussies open. Um, anyways. So, uh, so, yeah, they've had this theme in their music that's like, they're, they're always talking about, like, taking all their people with them and, and making money and, like, you know, just, um... We may not grow money, but man, we grow old. Man, we grow old. <laughs> anyway... In the Mountain in the Cloud is my favorite Portugal the Man album. Uh, the songs, uh, All Your Light, no, not All Your Light, can't, no, what the fuck is track three called? The one that's like, um, <sighs> fuck, it's fucking slipping my mind. The first three tracks are all fucking legendary. Like, the, the, the first three track stretch is fucking really amazing, and then the last song, Sleep Forever, is also God Tier. So then they spend two years on their next album, Evil Friends, and they've stepped up their game because they've got Danger Mouse on production. The guy who, who produced the, the first Gorillaz album, he also produced Gnarls Barkley, he's a hit maker, you know? Oh, Clint, Clint Eastwood and Crazy are probably the two biggest hip-hop songs to ever hit rock radio. Big crossover pop-hop songs, right? That somehow play on rock stations as well. They are exactly who Portugal the Man... Or he is exactly who Portugal the Man needs. So, they make Evil Friends. And when it came out, me and Victor, we listened to it a whole lot. And we were hyped for it before it came out. The songs that came out, the song Evil Friends, the song Purple, Yellow, Red, and Blue. I oh, loved yeah. Purple, Yellow, Red, and Blue. Come. Until I heard it enough times. And then I really hated it. And I felt that way about the whole album. It was just this weird sinking feeling that there's like three songs on this album that are exactly the fucking same song. Um, like, just straight up, it's the same song three times. Every song on the album sounds like it was crafted to be like a radio, a potential radio hit. It was like they made this album and they were just like, whatever, we're just gonna see what the, the stations want. And whatever they want to be the big hit, we'll, we'll just go for it. And I knew something was off because the first track on Evil Friends sucks balls. I really hate the opening song. And I was just like, uh-oh, this isn't good. And then, like, they had the song Creep in a T-Shirt, which is like, ooh, 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 get it, get it, get it, I'm just a creep in a T-Shirt, jeans, I don't fucking care. And I was like, this is a little meme -y. this is a little Foster oh. the people -y. this is a little much. And then uh, Purple, Yellow, Red, and Blue um, turns up. It was the, the theme song of the PlayStation E3 conference. <laughs> I, I couldn't help but notice. And then I start oh, to see it crop boy. up in commercials here and there. And I, I'm hearing it on the radio. And so what Portugal the Man figured out is that they didn't necessarily need a number one radio hit. What they needed was just a commercial hit. They needed songs that would, pl that would be ubiquitous. And Evil Friends gave them a taste of that. Because, like, when they, again, In the Mountain and the Cloud had radio songs. It had songs that, that, that made it, that got some airplay, but it's not quite enough. And, like, I think people just assume that if you make it to the radio, you're rich. But, like, if you're not doing a number one hit, it's not, it's not nowhere close, you know? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, if you make, the, the, the level of difference between, like, a number one hit and something in, like, the top... 15 or top 20 is it's pretty big go look at the numbers on YouTube views and you can see the disparity when something makes it to number one it's you're talking about 500 million views plus when something's like Crazy. fairly popular like enough to be on the radio but not necessarily big on the radio it might be like 50,000 views like this is an order or 50 million rather that's an order of magnitude 50 million versus 500 million is a pretty fucking big deal you know um, and like it seems it just seems impossibly large no matter how you look at it, but like 50 million views Would translate to like uh, 50 grand 500 million views would translate to 500 grand, 
you know, mm-hmm. in ad rev. If 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 we're and I mean it would be more than that because of what the ads would be worth. But yeah. like and other sponsorship deals and everything. Yeah, that's the difference between you know middle class and high class it lifestyle. Really is. You know, and so like Portugal the man, they're not getting millions of views on their their songs. Like even in this era. None of their videos are getting millions of views. They might be getting thousands. I had more subscribers than Portugal the Man at this point, literally on YouTube. When 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 uh, because I was following. They they always have badass music videos because they're really into like they're all big film buffs and they're really into visual arts and shit. And the um, the lead singer draws all the album covers and he does like art installations and shit like that. Uh, they're they're multi talented guys. They're also they're they're fun characters because. The singer is very much, like, artiste, like, doesn't do interviews, always, like, kind of just shies away and, like, it seems like kind of a fucking pain in the ass to deal with. Uh, but the bassist is, like, the nicest guy in the world, and he is the face of the band. Like, when they play live, I saw them live in the Evil Friends era, and, like, he's the one who talks to the <laughs> audience, not the singer-guitarist. That's like funny. He's just like, yeah, he always seems, like, super excited about everything going on, um... Yeah, he's he's a he's a sweet boy, but uh, the singer songwriter is like you know, distant uh, macabre. But they've done all kinds of weird, fun things. Like they they did a uh, they did a video like a YouTube video crossover with all, "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia," where uh, they get like zapped by lightning and it's fucking bizarre. I see. Um, Oh so they, they've got there's there's also one YouTube video that I absolutely love that came out during the in the mountain in the cloud development cycle where uh, someone just like busted out a camera while they're while they're all sitting in the studio and the the bassist is like like sitting in front of a soundboard and he's like asking the singer like oh did you do your uh, did, you, did you write the lyrics for this song yet and he's he's just like blowing him off and like looking at his phone and he's like he, he's like did you see these new shoes I got? These fucking shoes are sick, dude. And he's like, all right, uh, did you get the lyrics for the song, though? And he goes, when have you ever fucking seen me just write something down and just fucking go in and deliver? I'm f- and then he's like, he asks him something else, and he's not really paying attention. He's just looking at his phone, and he goes, pretty much, yeah, pretty much, pretty much, yeah. And uh, I say that all the time because of this video. Anyway. That's where it's from. Yeah, I'm just dumping all of my Portugal the Man uh fucking lore at this point so so yeah so evil friends comes out and the album's kind of a disappointment after i spent some time with it at this point the only song i really like is the song evil friends um just because of the lyrics being edgy and fun and cool um but another part of it is that a lot of their songs are also about like wanting to be evil and wanting to be like a corporate shill and like and be for money and be famous and not be a good person like purple yellow red and blue is literally when i grow up i want to be a movie star on tv because working just won't work for me now i can't focus feeling hopeless when i look back it's only for me and like these lyrics are not ironic. He's being serious. He just wants to be famous and rich. He's like, I, 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 I'm, you know, these guys have gotten old at this point. They've been doing this for a long time. It's not worth it to do it for so little anymore. And I understand this feeling. It's like when you get to a certain point and like some of their earlier songs than this are more about like wanting to take care of their people and their families and Mm -hmm. stuff like that and being like we need more money so that we can fucking you know so that we can be the best people we want to be but like i think when he cut to the core of the message and made it like more selfish it resonates more because it's more what our culture is you know he's just being real like look i just want to be evil i just want to be evil i just want to be evil want to be evil want to be evil purple yellow red and blue um, so yeah, which, uh, so that song, I did, I did a Vaporwave version of that song on my, my release Vapor Noise. If you go to my band camp and you listen to Vapor Noise, and the reason is that what bothers me about that song is that there is a lot of, like, lush instrumentation that's, like, really low in the mix that I wish was louder. And so what I did is I took the song, I slowed it down, 
I multi-tracked it and made one track higher pitch and one track lower pitch so that all oh, the background shit. noises are like really apparent. And then at the end, there's like kind of an epic riff that they only play for like four bars and it just feels like kind of a waste. So I looped that for like a solid minute. So my version of the song is like this loud, a, a fucking intense epic version that I literally like more than the original. Um, and I've listened to probably more times over the years. Oh boy. Uh, so yeah, go go check that out if you wanted to hear the noise core version of Purple, Yellow, Red, and, and Blue. And you do. Um, you probably don't. It's kind of headache inducing, even for me. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, so Evil Friends was kind of a letdown for me. So Portugal the Man goes quiet after this. They they tour for it, you know. They promote it, but they've they've kind of made their money now, so they have room to slow down. Cause that's all. Every artist who is hungry is going to do their best and most consistent and fast work, but they're doing it so they can slow down. Because it's not a fun lifestyle. It is not fun to bust your ass constantly and always have new things to say and do. And it's kind of like at some point you've paid your dues and you're like, I just want the fucking money so I can go and sleep for a I while. Just be so I can sleep forever, you know, as the yeah. song goes. I just want to sleep forever. I don't want to work forever, you know. Uh... That's the whole conceit of the song. So, I totally get it. But it wasn't enough. Evil Friends wasn't big enough. Yeah, they got yeah they got to play at E. They they got their song used at E3. They maybe were in a commercial or two. But there's so much more you could do. It could be like Imagine Dragons. Dun, dun, you know? dun, 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 Ding, ding, da, ding, ding, da, ding, 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 ding. Ooh, I'm a rebel just for kicks in. I've been feeling it since 1986. When I'm with and you feel it still. And when I'm not, now I'm feeling still. This song is fucking everywhere. You can hear it in the grocery store. You can hear it at restaurants. You can hear it in commercials, various commercials. You could hear it at sports games. You could hear it at a fucking funeral. It plays <laughs> everywhere. And why? Because it sounds natural everywhere. And they did this on purpose. They knew what they were doing. They made a song that has an addicting groove, but it has no real sense of progression. Like, you can't tell when it's switching from chorus to verse. It just kind of goes. It's very background. It's very placid. It just kind of sits in the background, but it's just catchy enough that you can kind of sing along to it. You could dance to it, but you don't have to. It doesn't demand you dance, but it suggests the possibility. It doesn't demand you sing along but you could, and this is the formula. This is what makes a big commercial hit. It's that uniformity, that, that ability to just be ubiquitous because it doesn't have any particular emotion behind it. It's just a perfectly generic, concocted piece of sound. And it also feels atemporal because, first of all, they stole the groove from a 70s song. Um, just straight up. It's just ripped off from a 70s song. Um, and moreover, it sounds like it could have, like, because it references the past, it references 1966 and 1986, it's like, it's got boomer nostalgia, it's got Gen X nostalgia, but it's got millennial singing style, because millennials like the high-pitched singing, but he's kind of doing it like Michael Jackson-y. It's not, it's not quite Foster the People. It's not edgy. It's not, like, it, like, there's a very light edge in that he says, I'm a rebel just for kicks. But it's nowhere near the edge of, I could never be your friend. I could never be your friend. Which was the previous album. Which even then is nowhere near the edge of fucking, man, oh man, you say it's so American. Which, like, sounds kind of anti-American if you listen to it the wrong way, Shit. you know? I mean, So American had the, had the lyrics, um, oh, fuck, something about Jesus being not cool, or like, uh oh, fuck, I'm trying to think, you are the one they call Jesus Christ, you may not know no rock and roll, because like, first, okay, let's get this straight, 
the band with like the ubiquitous song that we heard. Okay, we were at a, a fucking diner that like exclusively inhabited by old people the other day. Yeah. And it was great. It was a great so place. Like an old Greek dude. It was like yeah, an old Greek dude was behind the counter and an old old dude was eating there, and those were the only people there. And they played it here, and I want you to appreciate that this is from a band who five years ago released an album called The Satanic Satanist. <laughs> Because Portugal the Man's lyrics, up until recently, were mostly about how much they hate organized religion, and especially Jesus. They do not care for Jesus. They are some Satan boys. And and they hate the government. They, they and, But all their lyrics are very vague and sarcastic, you know? All the soldiers say it'll be alright We may make it through the war if we make it through the night All the people, they say I think that song might have also gotten a little radio play at some point, but like real, real buried. Like, like you know, Coheed and Cambria, Blood Red Summer level. Whereas like So American got like Coheed and Cambria, um, uh, 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 fucking what's the other song called? Welcome okay, Home level. Okay, it's a Sonic Boomer. So point being, got Sonic Boomer. The reason I'm saying all this is that when um, Todd in the Shadows did a video about, uh about that Portugal the Man song as well as an Imagine Dragon song and he was talking about the just the commercialization of rock music and how because rock is basically dead right now like everyone's just trying to make commercial songs because it's the only way to make money in in the rock world and he was kind of disappointed in Portugal the Man because of the fact that you know they're an, an indie band that he knew about that's like gone clearly gone down this commercial road and on the one hand as a fan of the band Yes, I am disappointed. However, as someone who, like, comprehends their lyrics and what they've been going for, I'm like, this is so obviously what they wanted, and it's so obviously formulated. Like, I know this is not for me. And, like, Victor was kind of mad at the... Because Portugal the Man did a lot of twee marketing around this album, where, first of all, they... They got a bunch of YouTube reviewers to make negative reviews of the album. Like... They they got uh, Deep Cuts, for instance. I think Fantano refused, um, but, like, the music reviewer Deep Cuts did a video just shitting on the album that he said literally they asked him to do it. Uh, like, and then they also made t-shirts that said, like, Portugal the Man sold out or Portugal the Man sucks now and stuff like that. And, like, Victor was, like, annoyed by it because he's like, yeah, well, the album does suck, so, like, I'm not excited to buy your merchandise. But to me, it's like... I think they're just giving you an out to express that frustration because they did not make this album for you. Like, they're acknowledging, yes, we fucked our fans over and we made a terrible album so we could make as much money as possible. I'm sorry. You know? Yeah. Um, and they just kind of embraced it. But, like, why would you not expect this from the guys who were just an album ago singing about how they can never be your friend and they just want to be evil? You know? Because that's what the song Evil Friends is about, is literally like, I am not interested in being your messiah and your friend. I am not interested in, like, relating to you anymore because we already went down that road and it didn't make us any money. No so money. now we're going to make a commercial hit and you're going to hear it everywhere. And it is such a weird feeling because when I got into Portugal the Man, they were thoroughly unknown. I did not know anybody who knew them other than the guy who introduced me to them, and he knew lots of, like, really obscure music, and I think he only knew about them because they had worked on that Sound of Animals Fighting album. Sound of Animals Fighting's not that huge either. Most people only know about them because of Circa Survive, because same singer. Uh, and Circa Survive's not even that big. So, like, we're talking about, you know several layers of abstraction down and this is a band i've been listening to for a fucking decade and now suddenly they are inescapable everywhere i go i hear portugal the man and the thing is i can't even really hate the song that much because it is completely inoffensive i don't mind hearing it it comes on and i think Ooh, i'm a rebel in my I'm a and i'm just like yep that song sure happened it's like two minutes of just one sound, you know? It's short as fuck. That was another problem I had with Evil Friends, is that they tried to make the songs more, like, full. Because Portugal the Man songs were typically, like, two and a half minutes. 
And on that album, they were all like three and a half minutes, and it just felt like they had added an extra chorus iteration in for the sake of the normies who who need that in order to fucking relate to a yeah, song, I guess. To be able to understand that it's a song. Um, all the songs are too short. Uh, they're not memorable. I don't hear the chorus three times, so it doesn't get stuck in my head. So, yeah, and I, I really like short songs. I'm a big fan. If For me, if a song is going to be verse, chorus, verse, I do not want it to be more than two and a half minutes. Like, that's my rule. If, if you're just going to do, like, a standard song structure, keep it as short and punchy as possible. Um, if you have to make it go for three and a half minutes, do a Kanye West and make it have, like, a big tone change towards the end, you know? That's what I love about, like... Kanye on like my beautiful dark twisted fantasy and watch the throne is like the songs will always have like some big shift and then he'll bring in the dramatic chords and you're like oh it's all fucking epic now oh, you know shit. like at the end of power when it's like you got the power to let power go narrow sleep narrow narrow sleep narrow narrow sleep and you're like oh 20 percent risk is on me that's the shit and then you're all like Da, 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 da. And the best part of Monster is the very end when it's like, I cross the line. Well, I shouldn't say it's the best part. Nicki Minaj's verse is the best part. Yes, I'm a monster, automobile gangster. With that bad bitch that come there. from Sri Lanka. She's stuck. Don't Pull up in a tanker, color a Willy Wonka. You could be the king, you watch the queen conquer. Anyway, that was my Portugal the Man story. You, you want to talk about anything now? You got any uh, topic? I was quite enlightened by your um, knowledge dump. I'm glad you enjoyed. Yeah. It's I have been trying to get that off my chest for a while. I know. Every time you hear it, you hear feel it still, you're just like, oh god, I gotta talk about this. Yeah, well, it's because... Make a video. You see, I made, I made this music channel hoping to get all these music things off of my chest, and nobody watched it. Like, this Let's Play will probably get 3,000 views. If I had made that Portugal the Man rant exactly the same as it was as its own video, it would have got like 1.5 thousand. So ultimately, even if no one who hears this video gives a single fuck about Portugal the Man, more of them will have heard this rant than they would have if I had it on my music channel. Indeed. Um, and uh, maybe I should do my Denzel Curry thing that way too, because like... There's no way I'm completing that documentary. I'll, I'll release the six minute chunk that I edited to my fucking patrons and then I'll just summarize the point on here. Because now that Taboo is out, I don't feel like I need to- Oh, it's just beautiful there, there was a time- I'll just share what the conceit of it was. Like, basically the point of this Denzel Curry documentary that I was talking up for a while and I was working on it- This is one of the many things that is why I didn't make any videos for two months and lost all my patrons is because all the projects I was working on were huge. It was like how they marketed and Denzel Curry documentary that was going to be like an hour and a half long and like just all these huge things that never came to fruition because we moved and everything changed and I lost too much money at once. It all ended. Um, so the Denzel Curry documentary, the point of it was basically that Denzel Curry has always been writing deep, thoughtful lyrics and all of his albums are concept albums and he stands for like mental health in a way that no other rapper really does. And, um, after Imperial, he did a bunch of interviews that kind of revealed this. And, like, so, like, I was listening to, uh, to the, his EP 13, and there's a part where he says, Kill my insecurities because they tried to make me soft! And I was like, man, Denzel Curry might have the best, like, mental health lyrics of any rapper. And then I started looking into it, and I found all these interviews where he basically is just going on about his mental health and shit and how important he thinks it is. So I was like, sick. Um, but the people who had interviewed him, like, no one... Like, like, it was clear that his fans had gotten really into this side of his message and that, like, his fans were really starting to appreciate him in a deeper way, but that critics hadn't really caught on and no one had really given him his dues What's for having been, like, fridge? so good for so long. Uh, it's a techno fridge. Can you go, can you go talk no, to I it? No, I can't go talk Can you to get it. around this? Yeah, oh, go wait. talk to that fridge. I can't talk. It's God damn it. It just is a freaky fridge. It's a fucking Freaky Friday fridge. And maybe it's got a Rotom in it. This is before Rotom existed, but, you know... Uh, That's probably what it is. So anyways, uh, I felt like Denzel Curry hadn't really gotten his dues, so I was like, let me be the guy 
who gives it to him. And uh, so I wanted to make this documentary. But then Taboo came out, and it feels like everybody gets it now because he made it direct, which was like pretty much the goal of the album. Just make the message more obvious, make people understand where he's coming from in a big, fun, poppy, exciting way. Um, he even made the fact that... like. A lot of critics seem to be, like, confused about, like, what is the concept of the whole, like... Because he released it as the light side, the, the gray side, and the dark side. And, like, I honestly think he added those distinctions arbitrarily at the last minute so that people would acknowledge that that was what the album was doing. Because all of his albums do this. All of his albums have a tonal climb. Oh, I'm stuck on the screen. Uh... Uh-oh. I think I just moved the mouse because I hit a button. Oh, okay. Um. There we yeah, go. there we go. So, so I was gonna try that. like Denzel Curry's albums previously had all had a dark to light build, and he wanted this one to go light to dark. But I think the fact that no critic had ever commented on the fact that his albums go dark to light made him think maybe I should just really beat people over the head with the fucking point and like release it in three chunks that explicitly state that and then it also gave him the chance to have three different release dates in a row so that like the hype cycle stayed alive for three whole days as opposed to an album just coming out and being forgotten about it was really smart marketing everything about how taboo was released was smart um and like clout cobain was a like his probably his biggest music video to date so that was also great um I'm excited that people know about it now, but it makes it so, like, my documentary, if I still did it, it would just be me going through all of his albums and talking about how, like, the message was always there, you know, and people just missed it, but, uh, but yeah, it feels less significant now, um, anyway, you got anything you want to talk about? Because I think I had another topic I was going to go into, but if you have- I can't think of anything I had prepared. Um, we could talk about your topic. Alright, um, what was my other topic? Do you remember? Was it about, um, being in the games? I don't think so. It had something to do with... Because I came up with it around the same time as the Portugal the Man thing. Uh, oh, it had to do with something... I remember when I had the idea, because it was in that cafe. That, the old guy cafe. Because I heard that Portugal the Man song, and I said... Oh, remind me to talk about Portugal the Man on today's Let's Play. Then we didn't end up recording, but, uh... And then I said another thing, and I was like, Oh, also remind me to talk about this. Um, but what was it? I can, like, remember the imagery of the room when I thought of the <laughs> idea, but not the idea itself. Ah, <sighs> fuck. You Why can talk I about how it? bad Pokemon Let's Go is gonna be. You can talk about that while I try to think of this fucking well, topic I'm In Pokemon Let's Go, there is no abilities or held items. Yeah. Um, also, you can't go into the gym unless you show the guy at the front that you have a Pokemon that is strong against the gym. That's so ridiculous. There's like, That's the most baby game of, like, The bullshit. first gym is like, show me a grass or a, a water type. And it's like... Ugh. Were people crying that much when they picked Charmander as a starter? Even if you did, you just gotta overlevel them and you can beat Brock. Like, Pokemon is the easiest game ever made. How do you make it even easier? Ugh. I don't remember what this fucking topic was. Portugal the man. And then the other thing was like, it had to do with like... I feel like it had to do with a holiday or something. Or like certain days, it, has, it was something categorical, it was some kind of category of thing that I'm like into. It was like my, my weird being into this thing kind of thing. Uh, well, in the meantime, I had also thought about just corroborating some of Victor's statements on a Vic and Hope that we listened to, the one that about hurricanes. Sick. Yeah. Um, cause he was talking about how he loves hurricanes and I have pretty much all the same thoughts he does cause for us growing up. Hurricanes never posed as big of a threat as they did just like a fun shakeup of your day of like it's exciting and in like Because uh, you don't feel the danger of a hurricane like you can look outside and see a bunch of wind blowing and stuff falling but like Unless something actually destroys your house. You feel pretty safe inside your house, you know um, It's just like 
a bunch of noise and fury, and it's it's and then you step outside afterwards, and everything looks I different, and it's, it's like really the trippy. Same as like a crazy snowstorm, like cause yeah, people, people get all crazy and like, oh, it's gonna be terrible. We're not gonna be able to go outside, and they go to right. the grocery store and stock yeah. up. And- it's yeah, oh the the fucking. All the grocery stores fucking sell out of everything, and then it's never a big deal. It's super fun. It's obvious that they do it for economic purposes. Like, they use the hurricane as an excuse to get people to go buy things to stimulate the economy. Like, I have no question about that. Um, But, like, it's a huge fucking waste, because in the end, you don't need all that shit. But, like, so, the hurricanes always come through, and... There's a few times that we literally, like, went out during them. And Victor brought up how, Whoa. how like, there was one time that, the, like, when Hurricane Isabel hit back in, like, 03, we lost power for, like, a week. And there was, uh, but during the hurricane, we got to stay in a hotel for a little bit. And I had forgotten that. I forgot we stayed in a hotel. V- Victor reminded me. But what I do remember is the drive to the hotel. Because we drove during the hurricane and we're like literally watching like trees falling onto the roads and shit and there's like That's there's bad. all kinds That's of just like heard. like the whole sky is full of leaves flying around and it looked fucking awesome it looked like a disaster movie like in real life it was cool as shit and it made me love storms and so i started going out during storms uh during my like late teens there was one time there was like a like the, by far the biggest snowstorm that Virginia Beach ever got. Like, it was a pretty serious snowstorm. Even having lived in Rochester now, I can still say this was a pretty serious snowstorm. Uh, and me and Victor went for like a two mile walk through it just because it was cool. Um, and I think we walked during like a, a minor, like a. What's up, Tom? We're recording a Let's Play. I was trying to be quiet, but it didn't work! What are, you, what are you up to? What's going on? I just finished uh, getting a list of games for I Am Games. Oh, shit, dude. For the rest of the year. Oh, fuck. In. There's only a few, but well, they're there. What are they? Share for our audience to get uh, us hype about I Am Games. Spyro Reignited Trilogy is one of them. Uh, this Sick. game coming out called Bio Mutant that looks pretty fucking cool. Bio Mutant. Bio Mutant. Who's it by? Uh, THQ Nordic. Uh, Did they do anything good? Um, is it they- a game about Ben Saint? What was the name again? Bio... Biomutant. Biomutant? Yeah, it sounds like Ben saying. Yeah. I, it's, uh, it's like an animal furry kind of game, but it's like okay. really dark and gritty, oh, and like, you evolve into different things that like Whoa. genetically mutate yourself and shit. Okay, it looks, sounds fun. Looks kind of cool. All um, right, what else we got here? So we got... Uh... Dude, you know what game is coming out at the start of next month that it might be interesting? is the Fist of the North Star game. Uh, yeah, that is on the list. The combat looks... Pr- I, I watched, like, a g- little gameplay trailer, and the combat looks pretty fucking sick. I pull up my Google Sheets. But, uh, but all that looked... Like, they, I didn't find anything except for combat footage, so I don't know if there's anything else to the game. Oh, God. What if there is? Uh, well, you know what? That's why you need to play. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Here's the list. This is the list of, of uh, things. Uh, Devil May Cry 5 is on here, but that's next year, so I'm not... Uh, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. I want to play that. I want to see how they ruined my favorite Pokemon for second favorite Pokemon. Yeah, we were just complaining about that. Oh yeah. Yeah, because there's apparently there's like a screen cap where uh, when you try to go into the gym, they like ask you like, do you have a water or like you have to show them like a water or grass type Pokemon to get into Brock's gym. Like you have to show that you have the type weakness of the gym to get into the gym. Literal baby game. You can't see me, but I'm, like, slowly collapsing out of utter disgust. <laughs> yeah, Tom is dying. <laughs> oh, God. I, I might take it off the list just because of that. Um, I guess Firewatch is coming out in the Switch or something. It's getting re-released. I want to play Firewatch. That game Why? Cool. That game looks, like, gay. It looks cool. Dumb. It's like a narrative game. Ugh. I don't know if you play it. Maybe it's not good for the for, for I Am Games, but I am interested in playing it. Uh, Spyro Reignited. Uh, a game called Override. It's like a mech brawler game. It looks like a spiritual. Now that se- sounds cool. It looks like a spiritual sequel to War of the Monsters. If everyone remembers that for the PlayStation. 2. I do love that game. This is another. It looks just like that, but just with big fucking robots. Okay. Uh, so that looks cool. Then Bio Mutant uh, and uh, Call of Cthulhu looks fucking sick. And I want to. What that Call game. of? What is this? What kind of game is it? It's like a first-person mystery adventure kind of game. They made a, huh. a made a Call of Cthulhu game called Call of Cthulhu: Dark Corners of the Earth, and it came out for the OG Xbox and PC. It was like yeah, a slow-paced investigative game. mystery really? game. Yeah. This looks just like that, but like 
I've big never dick heard graphics. of these. Uh, this look, it looks sick, and I want to play it. It's like you know, Call of Cthulhu early 1900s style. You're like a yeah. investigator, and you can like find clues in the environment, trying to solve a murder of like this house that burned down, and if you get involved with the occult and all that shit, it looks. Dead. Well, I looks love dead. me some Cthulhu mythos, Hell so yeah. I'm uh, I'm interested. So that's that's my list of stuff coming out this year that sounds pretty cool. All right. Well, look forward to all of that potentially being live streamed Slitten. into your fucking brain on I Am Slit. Games. Yeah, Slitten. another reason you should subscribe to Slitten. I Am Games if you haven't. Yet. Slit. Slit. It's talking about slit. going into some slits in this game. Holy yeah, shit! Yeah, we're talking What's about fucking. On? This is the opposite of a children's baby game. Then, if we're talking about that kind of. Oh, thing. this game is too edgy. This Can you remind me what I was on. thinking about two days ago when you weren't there? Probably not, but I can try. Alright, try. Um, you're talking about how, uh, man, it's so cool how Tom's making video games. And he's making video games upstairs, and he has, like, this Patreon with, like, no money on it. And, <laughs> and the Pony cast makes more money than Tom does on Patreon. That's bullshit. That's unfair. That's disgusting, and it needs to change. So, well, Ponycast isn't making any money right now because there's no episodes coming out. Yeah, but it's when it does, video basis. I wouldn't be surprised if Jesse was still charging for it, even though it was coming no, out. No, there's no videos. There's nothing is to charge. Is it per video or is it yeah, per... Yeah, it's per video. Oh, then they're making way more than me. They make more money per video than I make in a month. But they don't make any videos, so they're not making any money it's on the It's the channel. principle of the matter is what I'm pissed about. <laughs> I mean, you were thinking about it. You know how unjust it is. Sure. Uh, you... You gotta, um, you gotta get the I am game. Once the I am games audience grows, you can just put like, you know, like you can just, just put get rid of game your Patreon of your game and there. just get an I am games Patreon. I'll we'll just have the I am games Patreon. We be we on. might. Yeah. I mean, I, I I have I've thought that like I am games could eventually have a Patreon. I just want to wait till people start asking us to make a Patreon. Yeah. You know, before we. Well, we anyone ever ask though? Do people money? ask for that? They do. They do ask for that. God. If they want it, they'll ask. I need ask. more cult following, clearly. Yeah. Man, Umbreon, my favorite Gen 2 Pokemon. The only Pokemon edgy enough for teenage me. <laughs> yeah, this game was made. This game was made for you, Tom. You didn't even like Hound Hound Doom. Is this the one where you get Eevee in the beginning, or is that XD? That's XD. You yeah, because I know SBR. XD exists solely to be able to get Umbreon and Espeon in... Well, in this game, you Ruby start off Sapphire. with Umbreon and yeah. Espeon. Holy shit. Actually, that's why they probably did it in both, because in the reason they had to do these games is because uh, in uh, Pokemon Gold and Silver, when Umbreon and Espeon were introduced, you got them by friendship evolving in the day or the night, and when the next game came out, they didn't have a day or night yeah, cycle, no so next. it was impossible to get these Pokemon, so you had to get them from Pokemon XD or Coliseum, because there was no way to get them in-game. That is retarded. That's, uh, that's Nintendo for you. That was Gen 3 Pokemon, in general. Pokemon is so labyrinthine in its logic. It really is. And, like... We were just discussing this earlier, like, the, the existence of Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu is just continuing this, like, two and a half decade trend of why the fuck don't you just make the thing I want? Like, will they ever just make the fucking thing I want? No. Has Nintendo ever made the thing you want? Uh, f at some point in the 90s, I surely. I just want Coliseum I mean, with, like, internet capabilities. They're never gonna do that. They never, ever, That's been, like, ever, a wet dream ever, since 2000. It's been everyone's wet dream. I know. They'll never do I, it. I have just always wanted just to... Nintendo, do you want to make a lot of money? Pokemon Online Smash game. Melee HD. Oh, there yeah. you go. You've yeah. made literally every dollar that exists. I but don't get how they haven't. I don't, I don't know. Imagine if they took all the money they spent making Pokemon Go and just made Pokemon Go Online. Like, they would have won. Like, the entire world would be over. There needs to be, like, a march. Yeah? A march on yeah, their organized Facebook event. Because they don't care about petitions. The Mother 3 petition proved that. Do you know about that? I do remember that from back yeah, in the day. There was, like, a 50,000 signature petition to localize Mother 3 that Nintendo just ignored. They were like, we don't care. We're not going to do that because it's not going to sell. We it's weird care. how Nintendo just doesn't like some money. Some money it's just like, nah. No, not gonna do that one. Oh, that, that didn't do much. Holy shit. Yeah, he's gonna get killed. That's the meme. Oh. Oh, yeah, you're it's a little a level outmatched 50 here. 50 Pikachu. Just How is this shrek. happening? Oh, you got paralyzed, though. That's cool. Why are you using Pook Attack? It's not me. It's a oh. cutscene. 
Oh, what? This is a cutscene? Yeah. Why is there what? a... <laughs> Why is this... Why is this happening? Because that's the, that's the girl's grandpa. Oh, you're watching two people and fight. And he's getting okay, his ass kicked by a shadow Pokemon. That He's stupid old him. fucking boomer getting killed by this doomer yeah, over here. Yeah, fucking boomer. That boomer's a doomer. Yeah. Oh, doomer's coming to the rescue. Some yeah, doomers are gonna rescue like this boomer, boomer from that doomer. Should doomer be a shirt? Should we make a doomer shirt? Yeah. We should make a doomer shirt. I would, I just, I would, I would just take the it. doom logo, add ER to it. Yeah. Yeah. Doomer. Look forward to that on the I Am Games spread shirt. Yeah. We have, we have Look bad. at how many other Pokemon he has. That fucking Pearl thing. What? I don't even remember that being a Pokemon. Is that Did Gen you, 2 or 3? Gen 3. That's like, Did you even play Pokemon? Uh, I didn't May, play much you, Gen 3. Are you an 3. elitist Pokemon, Pokemaniac over here? Uh, her, her Twitter profile is literally, you don't know shit about Pokemon. Oh. Cool. Which is actually a quote from Victor from a... Uh, from, from an I oh, I didn't even episode. know that was a quote from Victor. You, you didn't realize that that's where you got it from? Like you surely you you heard that quote before you made that Twitter profile. Maybe it's just a, was was that you don't know shit about happen? Pokemon isn't like a yeah. trademark it's, phrase. Well, in in a uh, in Project Awesomeness read Jack. Oh yeah 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 I remember yeah. it was from Victor. There's a part I gotta, where you know I gotta attribute him. That's yeah. Not, that's not right. The 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 clip <laughs> is that like I say to Victor like we haven't made a video in like a year. What's what happened? And then I just like walk away because he's ignoring me. And then he's got two of his own face keep coming into the screen and like telling him like, "You're nothing, little bitch. You don't know shit about Pokemon." <laughs> and then he shoots himself. Nice. But then he becomes a ghost and he's like able yeah. to do whatever he wants. And so I'm like, "Dude, we can eat unlimited hot dogs." And then we do like this whole hot dog music video, and then we start eating hot dogs, and we get really disappointed, and Whoa. the video kind of fades out. I don't even know what's going on. It's too advanced for my brain. You should go watch it, dude. Look up Project Awesomeness. Oh boy. What? I I'm think sorry it, oh, it's just that called I another thought one. I came out. Came Project out with Awesomeness. That. It wasn't even one. my my own. I thought it was a deliberate reference it to the was. Project Awesomeness video. It was. It was. I just forgot. It's been a while. I see. That's I hilarious. just like to think that everything was my idea. So, man, here's the here's the important question. Yeah. Have you hashtag caught them all? I'm trying to. I mean, like, in general. Because in, in, in college, uh, this was a long time ago, there was, like, I think we are up to Gen 5 at the time. Like, there was this girl, Samantha, who had literally caught every Pokemon, and when she realized she was the only one in Anime Club who did, she was very offended at all of us for being casuals. <laughs> I caught every Pokemon in Pokemon Y, and that was 350-something Pokemon. Pokemon Y? There's only 350? Yeah. Why? That's like well in the, the second to last gen. I mean, you can get every Pokemon no, if you I've import them from other games. All but the and that, that doesn't count. Then. Unfortunately, well, I still haven't I even caught them all the in Pokedex. Gen One. I I was on the I was in the process of doing that before, um, because before X and Y came out, I decided to play Fire Red and try to catch all the Pokemon. And what I quickly realized is that the game is designed around that. And if you try to do it, the game is more fun that way. Like, if you want to actually make Pokemon Fire Red, Leaf Green, like, a challenge for yourself that, like, not like an absurd challenge, like a Nuzlocke, but like a satisfying challenge that feels like the game is was built Hitman's around it, um, try to catch all the Pokemon. And it makes perfect sense. So, when Y came out, I no. was like, I'm going to try to do that here. And Pokemon Y, the game was clearly not designed around that at all, and it was a huge pain in the ass that took most of a month. Ugh. Um... So, yeah, uh, yeah catching, and lots of trading. Catching all the Pokemon in red is one of my trinity of gaming horror stories. Um, so you, you did it, though? I did yeah. not do it. Oh. The reason I did not do it, this was my first run through of Pokemon back in the day when I was 10 oh, years old, or 11 or something like that, and I had, everyone in school was obsessed with Pokemon, so, like, I had my trade stuff on lock. Like, if I yeah. needed something to trade, I had, like, bitches around to do that. So... I had 149 Pokemon. The only Pokemon I needed was Machamp. I had to trade him a choke to get him a champ. So I'm right. like, oh, fuck. It's Friday and it's after school, so I can't do it. So I'm gonna have to wait till Monday. So that weekend, I went to go see a movie. I don't even remember what movie it was. Um, but I was in the theater playing Pokemon, grinding my Venusaur, and someone bumps into me, dirty. and the Game Boy flies out of my hand. No! And and the cartridge deletes all of the data. Oh, no! no! 
That's even worse than my fucking horror story about my level 98 Venusaur that fucking I ruined with a game shark. Oh boy. So to this day, I've never caught them all. That's on one, again, that's on my to-do list. Of, so someday, just sit uh, down I mean, and catch all 150 for real. Like I said, though, honestly, in 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 Fire Red, it does feel like the game is actually designed around it because like. The rate that Pokemon evolve at, like, makes perfect sense with the environments where, like, like at a very natural point, you will have evolved your, like, your Caterpie all the way up to a Butterfree, then you swap it out for, like, the Pokemon you catch in the next area, and that will evolve right before you get to the next area, and it's always, like, if you're just training all your Pokemon right, and, like, making sure you cycle them out during, uh, trainer battles, like, it's, uh, yeah, you'll always just smoothly transition to the next guy, Fucking throw them away like as soon when as they he evolves. Have a smaller and... number of creatures they could design the game around it, as yeah. opposed to having almost a thousand of them. Well, fuckers. yeah, that's what the thing with Pokemon Y is that there's just constant influx of Pokemon, and like they give you EXP share right at the start of the game, so that's oh basically God, the only die. tactic you have. But there's just so many Pokemon with so many rules about how they evolve that it's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. But the, the, the thing I do like about catching all the Pokemon in any of the games is that it will force you to interface with every system they've built. Like, because anything that gets introduced into the game, they'll they'll make a Pokemon that evolves based on that, you know? Yeah. So, like, I do think that that's neat because it makes you realize how deep the game really is. But then at the same time, you often just end up interacting with that system oh until God. you've evolved your Pokemon and then never again, you know? So there is that. Dude. You're getting fucking annihilated yeah. by this Hitmontop. Like, it's it. not fucking around. Hitmontop is dope. I just don't you know. You see, when your Pokemon are Shadow Pokemon, like like my Mantine, you can't level them up. So level 38 is, like, really strong. Because, like, my strongest guy's... Are you not able to purify Pokemon yet? That's what I'm trying to do right now. You have to oh. beat this guy first. Uh, this, this trainer battle is kind of hard. I didn't have a good team for it, but... That's why I'll Dude, just he's, die. Dude, he's, like, I'll hitting way too hard. What, what is this? I need to, to get Flaffy on my team. Well, oh, he like those get hit with his own recoil. Half so the that. damage is recoil. I need to get my Flaffy. Flaffy! I need to get rid of Remory, because Remory is level 20, and it's just just along God. for the ride. How do you grind if there's no wild Pokemon? I forget how that's done. You just, like, grind on trainers? Yeah. Yeah, grind on trainers. Oh boy, I wish I could remember what my other topic was. Some Someone in the comments, this is something I wondered about when I played Pokemon XD. Did Pokemon XD and Coliseum recycle all of the Gen 1 and 2 models from Pokemon Stadium yeah, 2? Yeah, Because they look identical. They are recycled. God, those lazy fucks! Ah! It sends me back here! Jesus ah! Christ! <laughs> no! How much progress did you just lose? Wait. A I'm lot! How did you get kicked? Was that like an hour of progress? No, like 45 minutes. Wait. Oh, boy. Oh, Does it just auto no. load you where you last saved or something? Yeah. Does yeah. it match? Yeah. Oh, so this game's shit is what you're telling me. This game is shit in a number of ways. Well. Um, not the least of which is We this. haven't played good games today yet at all. This is the same day we did Mass Effect. And I was just praising yeah. the, you know, the strategy you had to have while saving in this game. Yeah, well, I bet you regret that praise at I this do. point. <laughs> it was funny. I just started, I looked, I noticed you uploaded the Mass Effect Andromeda stream already to yeah. the channel. And like the first thing we say, like someone's like, why Andromeda? It's like, we just wanted to see why it's so bad. I was like, this like is a perfect setup for like a super cut of all of our yeah. freakouts throughout the whole stream. Oh yeah. Someone should do that and send it to me so I can post it. It would be hilarious. <sighs> That was so much just to just to have like final comments on that if if for people who are not going to go watch the stream we we were at GameStop just like checking out what games they got Wait. or did you actually have the idea did we go there for that purpose We did go there for that. Okay, purpose. Okay, so, okay, I have to turn off the game. Wait, why? Uh why? Because it took me back this isn't the guy I was supposed to fight. Uh-huh. I like not only did I lose progress but the shadow pokemon I caught are gone. So do you think if I'm we restarted, sure. you will have saved sooner? I'm, I'm not sure. Did it I'm somehow skip sure. you back a save? I'm not sure anymore. Wait, let me well, see. Well, check your guys. I have... This is my... Oh, I don't remember. 
This is so fucking annoying. Okay, let me beat this guy and see if I have my shadow you're Pokemon. You're on an emulator, right? Can't you just use save states and avoid oh this entire God. problem? Yeah, but I don't think she expected cheat, to lose. Cheat, 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 I didn't expect to lose, And honestly. I don't think you realize how long it had been since you saved either. Oh, I think... Whoa. I think my... My team is saved, though. I think I still have all the Shadow Pokemon I had. I think it just, like, brought me back there. Because I have Meditite on my team, and he wasn't on my team earlier. I'm a big saver. I'm a big, like, save every really mad, every though. single opportunity oh, kind of guy. Because I've learned from too many fucking lost datas. Especially I, from Pokemon. Do do remember in Resident Evil when you had to, like, use ribbons to save so you couldn't spam save? You had to, like, strictly yeah. think when you were to save? And yeah, it's funny... Sucked. Oh well, my god, these Pokemon you know, are so strong, too. There's no way I'm gonna win. How is how is they only a few levels higher than you and just take oh no damage? Oh my god, this is the most fucked up thing ever. Ah, I'm not gonna be able to win. He has five Pokemon. Why is this guy even here? Why is this happening? Because like, I died, and it brought me back to the last place I saved. Right, but why is... I thought you had already beat this place. I thought you beat all the guys here. Yeah, I did. That's why it's a different guy. Why is he here? I don't know. Maybe. Why is like such a strong guy just no standing idea. around in the place you had no already idea. beaten before? This makes no fucking sense. I don't know. I don't know what will happen if I go back. Like maybe if I go back to the same place, it'll just be like, oh, you already beat everybody. But <laughs> this is fucking super bizarre, and I don't understand. Like, just kill me, please. Just kill my team. I don't want to play this game anymore. This is very Pokemon. Um, oh my god. So, so anyways... I can't believe uh, I fucking died to hip on top. Tom had this idea where he was like, Hey, <laughs> I looked it up and Mass Effect Andromeda is like $10 used at GameStop. Um, and like, me and Tom are both big Mass Effect fans. And like, everybody said this game was really shitty. But like, it got like... You know, like middling scores. Right. Like 5 or 6 out of 10 for the most part. So we're thinking, maybe it'll be like, you know, basically Funny. just... Yeah, it'll be like a funny bad game. Like, it'll right. be like, ha ha, like, we're playing Mass Effect. The majority of the memes Effect. around the game is just like, the graphics are ass, the presentation's fucked, and I'm like, yeah. I would like to laugh at stupid facial expressions and shit. Right, and we wanted to know, because like, because of the fact that the game is so obviously bad in those facets, not that many people have talked about like, specifically what's wrong with the story. So we were like, maybe if we play it, we'll have a laugh at the bad graphics, and then we can actually figure out like, like, how badly did they fuck up the actual lore and storytelling? Um, but the game is so much worse than people have really given it credit for. It's unplayable. Yeah, it's... It is abysmal. It's a painful... Ex Somehow they, like, regress the gameplay back to, like, Mass Effect 1 levels. And, and worse. Like, because the, the levels are even longer and poor, more poorly designed. Enemy spawns make no fucking sense. Uh, I mean, you can just watch the live stream, but, like... Yeah. It, it was like, we expected this to be, like, kind of bad and just kind of like, eh. But no, it is, like, I thought it atrocious. it would be mechanically sound, at least, and it's not even that. Yeah. So, um, so we spent, like, two and a half hours playing it, and we're just like, this this isn't gonna, this is not gonna happen. Like, no. this isn't gonna fly. Like, this is not playable enough to find the, to find a, a, a through line to I think, analyze. I think the best part of the game was when we found that pre-made face for our character, which is kind of yeah. attractive. That was, yeah. like, the highlight of the entire game. Yeah, that face was... I mean, that face and, like, some of the art design of levels was okay, but it didn't... It was, like, the levels looked good, but they weren't good as game levels. Right. Like, there was too much detail, and the enemies fucking blend into the backgrounds. It was so bad. And then they had enemies that just straight up turned invisible. Yeah. So it was just like, oh, oh. oh, great. And then the fucking fail states for no reason. Like, you could just fail missions for, like... Like, for very unclear yeah. reasons. I think, like, at one point you needed to go over and help your dad lift a door, and I didn't do it quick enough, so it's like, you failed. Start over. Oh, like, boy. Oh. And then the fact that we played Vanguard, and the game's clearly not designed to play Vanguard at all. Yeah. It wasn't called Vanguard, though. It was Scrapper. Yeah, what's, what's Vanguard? I think it's like Dick. Yeah. Why would you change the class names? I don't know. That's very strange. I killed the electrode somehow. The somehow I killed one of his Pokemon. But still, people say, uh, like, uh, what was the line that he said that I had a problem with? Um, he's like, oh, real. oh yeah, yeah, this shit is getting real. Which is like, really? This shit's getting real. Yeah, Mass Effect Andromeda was really bad. 
I mean, that surprises no one. It was just so much worse than we anticipated. Yeah. What a shame. It's gonna take an hour and a half to kill Umbreon. You think so? Do you yeah. wanna just, like... Do you want me to just, like, like no. stop the game and no. start it back up? I feel no. like that'd be faster. I'm no, I would lose everything. Like, I'm pretty sure my progress, ha like, my Pokemon are still saved. Oh, God. I have hope. So uh, how... I mean, so you're saying that your Pokemon that you caught after the last time you saved are still with you? Yeah, I think so. I think they're oh, still Oh, I see. Now I think I it just brought me there as a save. I was point. very confused what you were trying to say earlier, but now I think I I was confused what as what was going on. <laughs> I was like, why am I facing level 40 Pokemon? This is incredibly fucking strange. You gotta use the, uh, the trademark Umbreon tactic of just using Toxic and then heal with Moon. I don't toxic. have Moonlight. I got what? Toxic, though. It's not level 34. You don't get Moonlight. It's like level it's 50. Alright, alright. If there's if there's a if there's a pseudo Wudo on my team, I don't have to cry. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So... so I okay, so this is like Dark Souls rules. Like, you retain everything you've gained. You just go back to the last spawn Pokemon fire. Pokemon Coliseum is the Dark Souls of Pokemon? I might, bitch. I might be. <laughs> oh boy. Fantastic. How, how do I go home? Let me go home, please. Oh boy. Well, I am relieved that I didn't just automatically lose the game, but I'm also confused as how to get out. I'm confused at how you're supposed to, like, get strong enough to not, like, get too hit by everything. I don't know why there was a level 39 trainer in this place that she had beaten, like, 45 <laughs> minutes ago. Like... Because you're, you're supposed to be able to go back and rematch these people because they're see. stronger. Well, then that's, that's how, how you you're supposed to train. Then. Right. Is to, like, you know, if you need to, but you don't really need to to beat the game. So like you can like you could do the story quest about like grinding, but like it makes it if you're trying to like level up all the Pokemon and make them on shadow like I am, it might be nice to to get some extra XP in. So that's the thing. Because like usually when I play this game, I just use Umbreon and Espeon, and by this point they'd be like level thirty nine. But uh, I'm trying to use all the Pokemon and like you know. So when when in episode two when we asked people to explain the appeal of this game. Um, the responses I got, none of them really answered the question that I really was trying to ask, but I think I can phrase it better now. Which is that this game clearly has, like, a very distinct logic that only this game has. Like, I've never played a game that operates under the same foundational logic as this game. And I think that for people who, like, call this their favorite game of all time, there must- it must have to do with that. Like, it doesn't play like a Pokemon game at all. Um, How do I get out? So, like... And, but, like, because that logic is so unique and it's not explained in a forthright manner, it's just, like, I feel like this is a game that if you spent enough time with it and you really understood it, you'd be like, yeah... I, I like get it. I know how this is a particular type of autism that sticks up with a particular type of new type. Uh, I mean, that's what I would say most games are. Like... I, I think, I really think that there's a lot of games out there that have, like, a trick to it. I would even say this about Dark Souls, that, like, um, and I, I, I told you about this, and, and anyone who's seen this video will have heard of it, but there's this H-Bomber guy video where he talks about how Bloodborne is, like, a teaching tool on how to play Dark Souls right, because the real, like, the, the, the way to play Dark Souls that is both the most fun and the easiest is to be extremely aggressive. And, like, Dark Souls gives you the tools to play defensively, and because most people are scared because enemies hit really hard and it's really scary, they they try to play defensive. They put all their points into armor, they get big bulky shit, and they try to tank hits. And it's just like, you will literally have a harder time with the game that way. Because the easiest way to play it is to just run directly at the enemy, get behind him, and just wail on him. And, like just look at their animations and as long as you understand the boss's animations you shouldn't get hit you know like but most people are just so worried about the amount of damage the boss does that they're not thinking about dodging as much as they should be and like 
So really the easiest way to play Dark Souls is with no armor and just the biggest possible sword and just so you can simultaneously dodge and do as much damage as possible and like just not get hit. You get more dodge meter um, for having less armor. Yeah. That makes sense. So not even more dodge meter, just you'll use less of it, you know, and like you, you can move way the fuck faster without armor. So like you should be like nubile running around carrying the biggest sword in the universe and killing every enemy in one hit so and that's how it's so fun you're saying for me. the funnest way to play dark souls is to make it the most like devil may cry possible that is how it's designed yeah like that's how most people like people who are good at dark souls that's how they play it they play it like it is devil may cry and that's why i kept calling bloodborne like the 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 median point between dark souls and devil may cry um, and whenever I said this to people, they'd be like, oh, it's a totally different genre. And I'm like, no, it fucking isn't. It's the same thing. You, you just look at the enemy attack animations, dodge, and fucking punish. It's how every action game works. This one is just more stat-based um, because it's a big open environment game as opposed to a fucking, uh, you know, straightforward, like, uh, arcade game. But, like, it basically is Devil May Cry as an action RPG. And now they're making, and, and then like Neo closes that gap even more. And now they're making Sekiro, which seems like it's also closing that gap even more. Um, but like, Devil May Cry doesn't have the fucking epic open world beauty. Though Devil May Cry, you can, they are kind of open world. Like you can just go back through wherever you want in those games. And sometimes you have to. I think all of them except two, right? Devil May Cry 5 and Sekiro come out within like two weeks of each other. That's gonna be madness. We should do like a video talking about both of them. The, the fucking like, the, the like action gamer world is going to like explode when that happens. It's gonna be the next golden age. It's gonna be... Too bad I wasn't like 16 on the GameSpot forums. There'd be some hot debates going down about oh, yeah. which one's better. I mean, there will be anyways. Yeah. Just on the stage of YouTube. I just won't care because I'm older and less inflammatory, I suppose. I should definitely save here. <laughs> Whoa. So you Best were on the name. you were on the GameSpot forums because I was on the GameFAQs forums. I was on GameSpot. It's my home away from home. I was on Cerebi.net. Hell yeah. I was. I went on there a few times. Never on the forums though. I used Cerebi to catch all the Pokemon in X and Y. Because <laughs> otherwise there's no way I was going to find out how half those fuckers... Some of that shit's very right. obscure. Tom, if you're going to talk that quiet, you got to get closer to the microphone. Oh no, I don't want to watch this cutscene yet. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome uh, to Pokemon Coliseum ASMR. Ooh, I'm a rainbow living exam. I can't believe they're going to make you watch. This is like the old man oh, no, coffee no, fight. no, I don't have fight. to watch him again. I can fight. What is the old man coffee fight? Uh, from the original Pokemon Red. When it's like, I have my coffee and I oh, teach you how yeah. to play Pokemon. And it's just like, the old man catches the Spearow or the Pidgey or whatever the fuck it was. It's like a Caterpie or something. That, like that. That's not nearly as bad as how it got in later games. You have to watch like the professor catch Pokemon and it fucking like babies you through every step. You watch the cursor very slowly move to each thing and all that shit. Oh. I haven't played any of the new Pokemon games. What's the last one you played? Probably Diamond and Pearl. It's time for adventure, Diamond and Pearl. We are gonna change the world. Pokemon, Pokemon. Never watched that either. No, yeah, well, that was the anime uh, OP. I figured, I figured. We all live in, in a Pokemon, Pokemon world. Pokemon. I wanna be the greatest master of them all. The greatest master. master. <laughs> Alright, so you made it up through... What, Orange Islands? That was, I think, Orange Islands. Did you get Pokemon Johto? Do, 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 do. Alright, he knows that one. Um, I don't know the Pokemon Advanced opening. No, no, I don't know either. I think that's probably why I stopped. It's bad. It's not good. Johto is my favorite gen. Johto is my favorite OP. I'll tell you right now that I became interested in rewatching all of Pokemon when I realized that. The first, like, everything up through Johto is yeah. considered the original show. Like, 276 episodes from the very beginning to Johto, that is Pokemon. Hopefully it's not until they switched anything. out uh, both Misty and Brock 
in Pokemon Advanced that it became... Or no, Brock comes back in Advanced. Either way, it's not until Pokemon Advanced that... Does he? Is Brock in Pokemon Advanced? Yeah. He is. Yeah, yeah. he cooks. E either way, that's when it became a different show. Yeah, and from then on, it's been really weird because the way they'll do it is like the first like gigantic chunk of episodes is considered a season, but then there'll be like two like fall like there's Pokemon X and Y, which is like 150 episodes, and then there's X, Y, and Z, which is like 26 episodes. Okay. And it's like it's very strange the release uh, style of the the season. Pokemon but, like, the show would have to be as cryptic as its source material, I suppose. Yeah, so the original show, everything up through Johto, kind of has like a consistent narrative Holy arc. Fuck, um, dude. It's okay, I want him to die. Cause what? like, so I can send out Flappy and he's kill. The best. Him. I know, but he needed. He did to his die. job. He got toxic out. Like the. Uh, the, the, the story of the Indigo League is, like, about Ash, like, being too egotistical and getting his ass kicked all the time, and then he loses the Pokemon League, and so does Gary. And then, like, in the Orange Islands, he, like, learns to be a better trainer and makes up with Charizard, and they become pals. And then Johto is, like, all leading up to him and Gary, like, now as humbled men. Oh, I definitely Like, regret you know, it, meeting yeah. again. And I've, I've never seen all of Johto, so I don't know how strongly it actually concludes this narrative arc. Um... But, like, there is there is some kind of an arc there. And then Advanced and Diamond and Pearl both kind of make it, like, about the, the new girl. And, uh... Right, right. And both of them are just kind of, like, boring, because the new girl is just, like, a totally generic Mary Sue character who, who nobody cares about. Well, I mean, I guess, oh, I guess in Advanced she's not really a Mary Sue. She just is a girl. It's just like, yeah, she's the girl. And Max, her brother, is just the boy. And they're totally boring. And then Diamond and Pearl, you've got... Uh, oh, I should not have poisoned him. You got... What's <laughs> oh, I have to restart. Wait, why, why should you not Because I had to him? catch him. Oh. And Dawn is just like, whatever. Okay, we have to restart. Do we? Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess I'll just hit, hit X and then hit play. This is going to be a reoccurring thing when I play this game. Because <laughs> I plan on catching them all. Um, but yeah, like, uh, Dawn just kind of was boring. Yeah. But Dawn's then you hot, get, though. Then you get to best, uh, <laughs> black and white, or in Japanese, best wishes. And I love that show. And I would legitimately like to watch all of it. Because I watched, like, 35 episodes of it while it was airing in Japanese. Because the, the two, like... It was the first season where, like, all the fucking previous teammates are gone, and he's got Iris and Dent as his two fucking people. And they were voiced by two of my favorite voice actors, and, like, that season put a lot more focus on, like, giving the Pokemon strong personalities. Like, everyone on Ash's team is, like, fun and cool, and they have really fun interactions, and, like, they really brought back, like, Pokemon-centric episodes where, like... You know, there'll be episodes where the trainers just aren't even really involved at all. It's just like, watch the Pokemon be cute. And I love that shit. And then Pokemon X and Y, a lot of people really loved that show because they took it more seriously in terms of, like, Ash actually being, like, a hardcore trainer. And, like, it's real, like, And he, he has a relationship with Serena. They, like, like each other. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I, I know that That's he has a relationship weird. with his Greninja. Ash can't fuck. Cause, uh, cause Ash, Ash is like a special Greninja that like is yeah, like, can, like just designed for the him. show, and he's like, like yeah, they they put a lot of emphasis on like the gym battles, but like so the Pokemon he sends out are completely random. The the gym battles were like everyone acts like they're super like Sakuga and like super well animated, but they're all like two D animation on three D backgrounds, and I fucking hate it. Like I really. And, like, they do lots of cool camera movement and shit, but, like, it's just so... Like, all I can see is that it's 2D on 3D. Like, that's all I see when I look at it. And I'm just like, ugh, I can't. I can't deal with this. Um, and they, they just tried to make Pokemon look really badass, but I, it didn't work for me. Uh, but some people really loved that season. But then they started up fucking Sun and Moon, and Sun and Moon is fucking great. Because that's where they just made it into a slice-of-life show, where it's just fucking Pokemon trainers having fun on an island paradise... Like a Hawaii XB. And uh, it's cool. So, like, if I was going to try to rewatch Pokemon, I would just watch the original series, Black and White, and uh, Sun and Moon. No, I'd watch all of it. 
Yeah, you'd watch Advanced? Watch all of it. Here's every single episode of Pokemon Advanced Generation. They show up in a town, and there's like 50 of some Pokemon. And they're like, whoa, there's 50 of this Pokemon here. And then the Pokemon are, are causing some kind of mischief, and then they resolve the mischief, and they move on. Literally every fucking episode. It's just like, oh, there's skip plumes everywhere. Skip plume, skip plume. <laughs> and then Team Rocket shows up and has the same exact generic, like, run-in with Team Rocket that has always existed. Like, from black and white onwards, they tried to mix it up a little bit with Team Rocket, like... Like, it, I don't know what they did in X and Y, but in Black and White, Team Rocket are doing, like, a totally other side story that has nothing to do with the main characters, at least for the early part. And I think it becomes relevant later. And then in, um, in Sun and Moon, they're just basically comic relief. And, like, they're just always getting beat up by this big bear, and it's, uh, hilarious. What the hell is that bear called? The one that's, like, the pink head on a brown body? Oh, um, uh... Wee Bear or something like that? Woo Bear? Something. Wee Bear Bears. Wee yeah. Bear. <laughs> Wee Bear Bears does seem like your type of show, Tom. I watched some of it. It was pretty cool. Yeah, fuck. Fell off the bandwagon pretty, pretty quick, though, just because watching TV is hard. Yeah. I don't know how people do it. Gotta have that shit on demand, dude. Not to mention Cartoon Network is just a clusterfuck of trying to air things. I don't know why I picked yeah. Sudo Ludo. I was a bad boy. I only turn on Cartoon Network. Um, there's nothing else to do. Well, I was going to say never because we don't have cable. But uh, when I happen to be at a place that has Cartoon Network, I put it on when I want to watch Teen Titans Go. Well, I mean, that's all they air. So exactly. Whenever you want. So if I want to watch Teen Titans Go... I switched to Cartoon Network, and I have a good time, because I love Teen Titans Go. How do you feel about Teen Titans Go, Tom? I haven't watched enough of it to really make it a solid opinion. You should. It's great. You never know what you're going to get. Every episode is just a fucking box, a Pandora's box of weird crap. Um, well, I'm now eating my last bit of chicken cordon blue. So, uh, enjoy that. <laughs> enjoy that ASMR. She went through What's going on with you, Tom? Meat. Nothing. I should be working on. Games. I'm supposed to be, be working, working right now. I'm gay. Just wait till I tell you what I'm doing instead of working behind this couch. Ooh. I can see both your hands, so. so <laughs> Doing some advanced shit. Yeah. New techniques. Special low frequency version. Exactly. Uh. Hitmontop. So, wait, are you telling me that you can get Hitmontop in this game? Yeah. That's Suddenly why. a 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we have a whole PCP about how cool Hitmontop was recently? Uh, we had a episode where Munchie was very upset because there's no official Hitmontop merchandise on the Pokemon website. That's what it was. <sighs> Even though I'm pretty sure I have a Hitmontop plush. I, she said not it was up worth there. a lot of money. That was... You looked up on eBay or something. Oh, did we? Did that happen? I don't yeah. remember that. Um, as I'm looking up at my wall of Pokemon plushies and I don't see him, but I, that doesn't mean that he's not existing somewhere at my old house. I don't know. I don't know if we had one. I, I just... Maybe we had a plastic toy of Hitmontop. I know we had some kind of Hitmontop merchandise. It was a Hitmontop top from Burger King. That was also a thing I think we had. There is definitely... I have that one, for sure. I also have a coughing male. Yeah, and I have a bunch one. of the coughings. Those are the fucking... Oh my god. So, for anybody who wasn't around in the 90s... Probably most of our these at these this point. tops. It was basically like a a ball shaped, fairly heavy piece of plastic Pokemon that had like a little spinner on the bottom. And the idea is that you like would just rip this spinner across like a countertop and then put the thing down and it would it would hopefully right. spin. It was it was hard to do because uh, they were they took like a lot of momentum to make them. You move. needed to give them some good ones. Um, my dad had. 
a like 73 inch CRT and probably within a year of him owning this guess what looked like a great flat surface to rev our Pokemon tops on ah! uh, so for the entire time that my dad has owned this what? TV there have been like four huge streaks across it from where we fucking streaked these Pokemon tops and like you can't really see them that much when the TV's on and my dad you know, can ignore this kind of thing, but he, he was quite pissed when it happened. <laughs> he just comes home and there's a bunch of fucking huge streaks on his brand new fucking set. But, like, the thing is, I never understood... Like, my dad always would buy, like, like try to buy, like, nice home furnishings, and we would ruin all of it. And I don't know why he bothered. Because he never, like, set any ground rules. It was never, like, established, like, hey... Don't fuck with this piece of furniture, it's expensive. Like, I mean, sometimes he, he would sell us, like, not to jump on the couch, and we would anyways, but, like, there was no re repercussions for us. There was no discipline in our household. My dad would just ask us not to do things, but once you've done it, you can't go back from it. Once you've broken the couch, you can't fix the couch, you know? So it's right. like... Wait, man, did you poison it's him like, on look, top again? You have to make I a decision. To. I want to capture him. I thought you said you didn't want to poison him last time. I didn't realize that he did that much damage to me. No, I want to poison him. Ah! You sure you want to poison him? Ah! He died of give up. I don't want to play it right now. I'll do it next time. All right, everybody. That's no, all for this no. episode. R.I.P. headphone users at... Uh... I'm sorry. I didn't expect his recoil to be that high. <laughs> uh, um, see you all next time on Pokemon Coliseum. I thought I would catch him for sure. Uh, have, have a nice day. Uh.